All right, let's get right into it. The topic for today's explainer is the manipulated self, social media's dark truth. We're going to pull back the curtain on the platforms we use every single day, and what we're going to find is a pretty startling systematic manipulation of our own behavior. So yeah, let's dive in. So here's a question for you. Have you ever looked up from your phone and just wondered, where did the last hour go? You know the feeling, right? You're just scrolling, caught in that endless stream of videos, pictures, and posts, and then boom, a whole chunk of your day has just vanished. Well, I'm here to tell you that's not an accident. It's by design. And believe me, the cost is way bigger than just a bit of lost time. So what does that design get these companies? Check this out. 4.8 hours. That's how long, on average, American teenagers are spending on social media every single day. If you do the math, that's over 33 hours a week. That's basically a full-time job just spent inside these digital worlds. And all that intense engagement, well, it's having a very real and honestly, a deeply concerning impact. And here's where things get, well, truly alarming. Just look at the data. It shows a direct link. For the heaviest teen social media users, the rate of suicidal thoughts is double, literally double that of teens who use it the least. This isn't some random correlation. It's not a coincidence. It's a crisis. So, okay, we really need to look at this as an unseen crisis. We're moving beyond just individual stories of, you know, oops, I wasted an hour, and we're starting to uncover a massive systemic issue. That feeling you get, that you're being manipulated, it's not just in your head. In fact, look at this. It's not just a hunch. A staggering 84% of adults around the world believe social media makes it easier to manipulate people. That's huge. So this isn't just a problem for teens, and it's not just happening in one country. This is a global phenomenon, and it seems like people are really starting to wake up to it. Okay, so if we all kind of feel this is happening, that leads to the really big question, right? How are they actually doing it? I mean, it can feel like some kind of magic trick, but it's not. It's a very, very carefully crafted system. So how does this machine actually work? How is it designed to grab our attention and just not let go? Well, that's what we're going to get into right now. We're going to open up the manipulation playbook. We're about to uncover the psychological architecture, the very blueprints they use to engineer addiction and keep us hooked. It all starts with something called dopamine hijacking. It's all about our brain chemistry. You see, Every single like, every share, every little notification, it's all meticulously designed to give you a little hit of dopamine. That's the brain's reward chemical, the same one involved in pleasure and, yep, addiction. And as experts like Dr. Anna Lemka have explained, this creates what's called a dopamine deficit state. It's a neurological condition that's a lot like deep depression, and it's what makes us desperately crave that next digital hit. And the main way they do this? It's a psychological trick called variable ratio reinforcement. Now that sounds complicated, but we all know exactly what it is. It's a slot machine. Think about it. With a slot machine, you pull the lever, not knowing what you'll get. With social media, you swipe your thumb. You never know if that next scroll will bring a reward, a like, a funny meme, a message from a friend. It's that unpredictability, that chance of a reward that is so, so addictive. It's literally a slot machine in your pocket. And this isn't just random. It all comes together in a very specific formula, one developed right at Stanford called the Fog Behavior Model. It's simple. A behavior happens when three things come together at the same time, motivation, ability, and a prompt. And boy, have tech companies mastered this. First, they tap into your motivation, you know, that fear of missing out or wanting social validation. Then they give you the ability, making it super easy, like with infinite scroll or one-click likes. And finally, the prompt, that little red notification bubble that you just can't ignore. When all three of those things hit you at once, the behavior becomes automatic. It's not magic, it's just a formula. And just how common is this formula? Get ready for this number, 97%. That's the percentage of popular apps that researchers found are intentionally using what they call dark patterns. And these are exactly what they sound like. They're deceptive designs, little psychological tricks to get you to do things you didn't mean to, like making it almost impossible to cancel a subscription or tricking you into sharing more personal data. 
This is deception on an industrial scale. Okay, so we've seen the how. It's a pretty sophisticated system, right? But that just leads to the biggest, most important question of all. Why? I mean, why would anyone build these incredibly complex systems of psychological manipulation? What's the end game? What's the motive? Well, the answer probably won't surprise you. It's money. It always comes down to money. But it's the way they make the money. The business model itself, that's the real story here. It's an economic engine built on a foundation that puts corporate profits in a direct fight against our own well-being. And this engine has a name. It was coined by Harvard professor Shoshana Zuboff, and it's called surveillance capitalism. Here's the most important thing you need to understand about it. You are not the customer. You're the product, or more accurately, you're the raw material. Your experiences, your feelings, every single click, it's all harvested for free. That data is then used to build these incredibly detailed models that can predict your behavior, and those prediction products are what gets sold to the real customers, the advertisers. And here's the quote from Zuboff herself that just nails it. It's an economy that doesn't go out and mine the earth for oil or gold, it mines us. It mines our lives. Our human experience is the resource being translated into data all for someone else's profit. Now, for a long time, all of this was kind of a theory, you know, a powerful one, but still a theory. And then we got the smoking gun. Internal documents leaked from inside Facebook itself that proved it. They proved without a shadow of a doubt that the company knew. They knew exactly what kind of harm their products were causing. These became known as the Facebook files. And what they revealed was devastating. It was Facebook's own research. It confirmed that Instagram makes body image issues worse for one out of every three teen girls. It confirmed that 13% of teen girls in the UK who had suicidal thoughts traced them directly back to Instagram. So what did the executives do with this horrifying information? They buried it. They suppressed their own findings. And that brings us to the whistleblower who leaked those files, Frances Hagen. Her testimony just cuts right to the heart of it. She said the company's leadership knows how to make their platform safer. They absolutely know. But they won't make the changes because they put their massive astronomical profits before people. It's that simple. They knew how to fix it, but making it safer would mean less engagement, which means less profit. They had a choice to make, and they made it. Okay, I know that was a lot. It's heavy stuff. The system is designed to manipulate us. The motive is pure profit. The harm is proven from their own internal documents. So, what now? Where does that leave you and me? Well, for this last part, we're going to shift gears. We're going to move from just being aware of the problem to actually reclaiming our own minds and taking back our agency. So, the way forward really has to happen on two different levels at the same time. First, there's what we can do as individuals, you know, things like taking a digital detox, setting time limits on our apps, or even using browser extensions that get rid of infinite scroll. But let's be real, because this is a massive systemic problem, it needs systemic solutions. That means things like new laws that give us a choice in the algorithms we see, or laws that hold these corporations liable for the harm they cause. This right here, this is your path back to agency. This is how you start to get your power back. And you can start literally today. Learn to recognize those sneaky dark patterns. Go into your settings and turn off all non-essential notifications. Set time limits for those problem apps. But please don't stop there. We have to use our voices. We have to advocate for real change, for laws that demand these companies be transparent and that truly protect our kids. Look, we are at such a critical moment right now. The future doesn't have to be one where our attention is constantly being harvested and sold. The answer isn't to just log off and hide from the world forever. The answer is to fight. To fight for a digital world that's actually built for people, not just for profit. The battle for our own human agency has already begun. So the only question left is, are you ready to fight?